Hi there. Welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. And um, that was an intoxicating array of Guinness toucans that we just saw. Um, very exciting. So nice to see the variations, but also the accuracy of a lot of them. It's, it's, it's very cool to see the same image kind of passing through various people's brains and pens and stuff like that. So that's very nice. Um, welcome, everybody here. Uh, welcome to Thistle, whose birthday was yesterday. Exciting. Congratulations. Welcome to being old. Er, even. So, uh, and to Jen Cahill in Hawaii. Fantastic. Hope you're having a great time there. I have never been there yet, but one day I hope to. So, um, today, what do we have to talk about? Well, let me think. What, what is it? What is on my mind? Um, well, first of all, I'm thinking about the zigzag book from Hanumula, which I'm going to be drawing in today and which we're going to be giving away to some lucky folks who would like to have an exciting zigzag. It's a really good quality watercolor book that happens to be accordion, accordion folded. And uh, the nice folks at Hanumula have given us a few to give away. So if you'd like one, let us know that you would and why you would. Write to us at info at sketchbookschool.com and um, give us your mailing address, because otherwise we won't know where to mail it. Unfortunately, we can only do this in the United States because we are sponsored by Hanamula USA, but nothing actually that unfortunate about it. We're excited to be able to do it. Um, what else? Sang Sub Lee, our friend from South Korea. Welcome. I hope that you're doing well. Thank you for getting up early or staying up late. I'm not sure. And also Wagner from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Welcome. Welcome to Draw With Me. Uh, yes, JJ says we have four 8 by 6 18 pages. I'm going to be drawing in an 8 by 6 18 page zigzag in a little while. So um, you can join me for that. Um, I also wanted to tell you that we won't be doing Draw With Me next week. Why? Because it is our wedding anniversary and we are taking a little tiny bit of time off to get out of town and, uh, you know, celebrate the fact that we are still together despite the pandemic, <laughs> despite the vagaries and tribulations of life. We are still in love and still united. So that's a good thing, right? Worth celebrating. And uh, we, ha we haven't missed a draw with me in you know, ages. So it will be, I hope that you will figure out something to do in the meantime. Maybe draw without me. Maybe you could all get together and uh, figure out something. Or you could watch an old draw with me. There's millions of them packed away on YouTube. So feel free to do that if you'd like. But speaking of travel, that's what I would like to talk about today is travel. I haven't had, haven't had a lot of opportunities to travel over the last couple of years. And something traveling is something I have done an awful lot of over, over the years. And um, it's been really tied in with my drawing because it took me a while to figure this out. But drawing when you travel is some of the best kind of drawing you can do. It is a great way to practice new things, but it's also a great way to tell a story, a great way to get a lot more out of your traveling. In fact, um, let me just switch here. I want to show you. This is, a, this is a book I did a few years ago called An Illustrated Journey, and it is uh, all about travel journals, all different kinds of travel journals. Maybe you know this book. It is um, it's not showing up very well on this clipped screen. But, um, you know, let me, let me do something here so that you can see it and not see me. And, uh, yeah, here's our friend Jean-Christophe Deflin and uh, Suzanne Cabrera, 
paper and can't have a door. Here's some drawings of mine. Yeah, so this book is um, is really uh, an introduction to all the different ways that artists record what they do as they as they travel the world, all the different kinds of ways that they tell stories. And, you know, it's, as I said, it's something that I really miss doing because it is, uh, it is such a rich opportunity and such a rich opportunity to make art and to experience the world. So um, here's that Hanumu Zigzag book, by the way, which we'll be using later on. Let me share this with you. This is, um, this is my sketchbook from a trip I took a few years ago to Vietnam. Vietnam. It's not a Hanumula book. Sorry, Joe, if you're watching. But, um, you know, here's an example of the way that I like to do an illustrated journal. Everything from the Starbucks that I had at the, at the airport, a tangle of complex telephone and electrical wires, some vehicles, crowded streets, a map, and um, a little birdcage, some Vietnamese iced coffee. So, yeah, so I like to really record all aspects of my trip. You know, whether it's interesting architecture, like these temples, or people sitting in a restaurant while I was having dinner by myself, but also the stories that I tell, like this is about, about uh, being in some kind of tough looking Vietnamese beer joint and uh, meeting up with a bunch of guys who seemed like they were really tough and scary gangsters, but actually they were really nice and they started giving me sips from this bottle of moonshine that they had with them. So I wrote a bit about them and you know, here I went to um, this war museum where they have all these American uh, aircraft that were shot down, tanks and things like that. Opera house. So, oh yeah, this is when I got shingles. This is what happened to me at the very end of my trip. Shingles, writing about my shingles. So, um, so let me just see what you're saying here. Jane is saying, I wish I had time to do travel journals. My family would never allow me enough time to capture the best locales. I think it's time to get a new family. No, I'm joking. But, you know, that is a thing that people wonder about. How do I draw when I've got a bunch of people with me? Well, first of all, you tell them how important it is to you to do this. Second of all, maybe invite them to draw with you. If that doesn't work, tell them you'll meet up with them in 20 minutes while you just do a quick drawing. Draw, you know, it is, it is something that you will always regret not doing. And you will long have forgotten their complaints, but you will have this incredible souvenir of your, of your experience because you had all that much deeper of an experience because you were drawing it. So think about it, negotiate with them perhaps beforehand, but I strongly urge you, you spend a lot of money when you go on a trip, a lot vacation dollars on hotels and travel and food and stuff like that. This is a way to commemorate it. So like this Vietnam trip, right? When did I take this? It was, I don't know, it was many years ago. Not many years ago. It was probably eight years ago. And now I have this little book. And as you saw, it wasn't, you know, you go somewhere, you're sitting around, you're having a glass of iced coffee, so you draw it. It's not... An incredible imposition, I strongly recommend. So, yes. Janice says, take photos and draw at night. Could do. Could do. I think it's... I think part of the experience of drawing on location is capturing the moment as it travels past you, being surrounded as you're drawing. So don't just do that. Yes, that's certainly a backup plan. But I would say try whenever you can to do, to sit down and do a drawing or two on location. It will make all the difference and it will, it will also embed the experience in your memory all the deeper. So, um, Lisa says it's hard to stay in one place when you have a lot to see. I guess so. 
I guess the question is, what will be the deepest memories? You can rattle through a giant itinerary, or you can pick and choose. I'm not going to tell you how to travel, but I can tell you that it doesn't take a huge amount of time to draw. As we've done many times here on Draw With Me, you can knock out a drawing in five minutes. You can knock out a drawing in one minute. We've done that. So just think about it. But what I wanted to do is, well, Chris has a good idea too, which is start the drawing on location and then take a photo and finish it later on. Lots of, lots of different uh, ways of doing this. Can I show you my kit? Well, I don't have a travel kit right now because I'm not traveling. However, I have written about it extensively in Illustrated Journey. I talk a lot about it too. Um, so, I, in fact, I did a whole class in Sketchbook School about traveling. So, I've covered this quite a lot. And, uh, you know, let, is, let us... Um... Okay, I see that there's more questions about this. This little book, right, certainly fit in my bag easily. A pen or two. Um, let's see, a water brush. A brush that has water in it. Um, and a little field kit. I don't have one exactly handy with me right now. It's on the other side of the room. But a little set of watercolors. That's, the, that's all you need, you know, and those can all... The, the watercolor set isn't much bigger than this book. So um, that's all you need. You can take a couple co color pencils with you. You can also buy some stuff along the way. So, um, yeah, as JJ says, I, I travel with very little. And uh, you don't need a lot. You can always, when you come home, if you need it, if you wanted to augment your stuff, you can. All right. So, as I said, one of the things that I've missed a lot recently has been traveling. I think a lot of us have. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to tell you about something that we've been doing at Sketchbook School, which is help to itch, scratch that itch a little bit. Um, and that is the Virtual Travel Club. Okay, I want to go over to, so this is the schoolyard. Um, maybe you're a member of the schoolyard already, but the schoolyard is the sort of sketchbook school equivalent of Facebook or something like that, but without all the goobery things that Facebook has. Um, look, here's Peggy's drawing from last week. Not my favorite draw with me, she says. Who'd ever thought I'd be trying to copy an advertisement, let alone one for beer? Oh, Peggy, I'm sorry. Um, so yes, so and we have drawings here from Ukraine, uh, this fantastic event that we did on Monday to gather art together for Ukraine. I hope you were able to join us for that, or you can go back and watch it. But yeah, so this is the this is the kind of hub of the community of Sketchbook School. If you've ever taken um, a class at Sketchbook School, any kind of course ever, you get free membership in it. So hopefully you know all about that and you are. Um, but one of the things is the tr Virtual Travel Club. And this is Nanda and Karen are the leaders of the Virtual Travel Club. And every week they post a destination. You can see these are all the destinations. So each week they pick a city somewhere in the world and the virtual travelers travel together to that place. As you can see, we are up to Number 59. Number 57 was Phoenix. They came here and they swam in my backyard, swam in my pool. Um, uh, and then 58 was Venice. And then this week is Siem Reap in Cambodia. So what does that mean that they travel virtually together? Well, here are examples of all of the things that people have posted that they went to Siem Reap in their imaginations, right? So let's look at what Kim did. So Kim drew this temple with some limb, some uh, roots on it. Beautiful. And she also wrote a story. And what a lot of folks do is they write a story as if they had actually gone on this trip. Like here, Silka writes about going to Tonle Sap Lake. Went for a boat trip on Tonle Sap Lake to see the floating villages, amazing nature, and so forth. Um, well, here is Joe Fag went to the Ta Prom Temple near Angor Wat. And she did this great little drawing. 
So all these people are interacting with each other. It's just a f- fantastically fun thing, and uh, it happens every week. See, some people are still posting some stuff from last week, which was Venice. And uh, here, this person, Tammy, says, I missed you guys. I missed the plane. I was still wandering the Phoenix Zoo. So that's from two weeks ago. So, so yeah, you can join it any time. And it's a really fun thing to do. You can come, you know, do it every week if you want. Just do it one time. It's up to you. Oh, look here. Anka has done a collage. So, all right. So how do we do this? What we do is we go to Google and we type in Siem Reap. Where is Siem Reap? I, I didn't even, wasn't really even familiar with it. Well, it turns out it is a resort town in northwestern Cambodia. And here we see a map of where it is. And uh, let's see, it says it's the gateway to the ruins of Angor. Angor what? I've heard of that. Um, the seat of the Khmer Kingdom from the 9th to the 15th century. So we can do some more research. We can find out some more stuff about it. We can do a little bit of reading here on Wikipedia. And then we can go and start gathering our pictures from the scene, you know, of this place that we want to go to. Um, so... I like to use Unsplash. Unsplash is a website that that gives freely usable images, so you don't have to worry about violating copyrights. You know, these are, are these are pictures that were uploaded by photographers who said, "Yeah, go ahead and use my pictures." So we type in Siem Reap, and we find that there are so many beautiful pictures of Siem Reap. We see all the different ways that these photographers have interpreted Siem Reap, right? They've gone, and we can see there's lotus flowers on the river, and there's temples, and here's like the kind of the nightlife, and these beautiful... This is the most iconic thing of Angkor Angkor Wat, is this temple with these incredible... I'm not sure what kind of trees they are, maybe somebody knows. And uh, yeah... Laura says, I thought you had to be a Spark member. No, no, no. This is for anybody who is in the schoolyard. If you aren't spending time in the schoolyard, you should be, because it's a really fun place. And if you are spending time in the schoolyard, I'm sure you would have heard of virtual travel. So make sure you come back. And if you need help getting back there because you haven't done it in a while, we will gladly help you with that. So, yeah, so the deal with with Unsplash, and there's a few other sites like this, is find pictures that you like, and then you just... Click on on them, and you say, okay, I like this picture, and then there it is, and then I can just download it. You might need to sign up for an account. It's free. Uh, They just like to keep track of what pictures you've used. But I've been using it for years. I've never paid a penny for it. They ask that if you use the photo that you thank the photographer. It's totally voluntary. We're not going to be really using the photo so much as we are going to be... um, using it as reference. So it's up to you. If you want to reference the picture, reference the photographer, I don't think that's any kind of an obligation. And then when you've done this, you can come back to the schoolyard and you can share what you've done. All righty. So I've gone... So what I would suggest is I'm going to show you some pictures that I've gathered. Here's some pictures that I've gathered. Um, But... Uh, it's up to you. You use whichever pictures you want. If you want to go and do other pictures right now, if you want to spend a little bit of time doing some photo research while we start drawing, totally cool, whatever you like. Um, Do your, take your own trip. Because I think the coolest kinds of virtual travels is when everybody goes their own way and then comes back together and says, look, this is what I did. So yes, unsplash.com, unsplash.com. That is, but this, but also you can just type in free stock photos into Google, and there's other sites that will come up too. But I like I like Unsplash. I think they have good pictures, and I and I like the way they're organized. Okay, um, cool. What else? What else can we do? So let's have a look at this. This is a cool temple, and I want to. What I'm the way I'm going to work is I'm going to draw relatively quickly, as if I was you know, with a bunch of friends and, you know, it's exactly the kind of thing we were just talking about. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to inconvenience them. By the way, this is the zigzag is, as you can see, it accordions out. So it's kind of cool that you can just, um, you can stretch it out. So if you end up going over the gutter or something like that, you can have another page. But I'm going to use just a micron to do my drawing with. 
and I'm going to just, I'm not even sure what my design is going to be yet. I'm just going to start drawing and um, then we'll see where where the sort of composition of the page takes me. Because I, do, I don't want to just do a bunch of random floating drawings. I want to tell some kind of a story. Um, and, you know, I, do I even know the name of this? I wish that I actually that I had taken more better notes when I went to Unsplash because then I would know where exactly this was and I could write a bit about it. But I could just make this up because I might want to write a bit of a story um, about like what was this day in Cambodia like? You know, I could make up like what did I eat and, um, you know, with, did I run into any interesting characters? All the kinds of things that I would have normally written about when I... Um, when I go on on a trip, I like to focus on lots of different aspects of the trip. So I might I might learn some information about this temple when I'm there, and I might and I might write that down in my journal. You know, what about the history of it, and um, you know what is unique about it? Why why do people come here? And then I could might also write about like I don't know some guy who was doing something interesting in the background. I've, I'll make something up, but like, you know, I mean, because I, I can remember, like in Vietnam, I had so many interesting experiences, you know, particularly when you're traveling on your own, you're kind of forced more to interact with with people because you're on your own, you know, and so you don't just kind of hang out with your crew, but you ask people for directions and then you can... You know, if you're open, you fall into conversation with them. And that's often one of the best parts of travel is, you know, meeting all these other people and um, coming up with stories. You, know, you might even make some new friends. But you learn one of the most powerful parts about travel is learning the ways that other people live and seeing, you know, I love to go to a supermarket in every country that I visit and see, like, what is it like to, what would it be like to live there? And um, what kind of f food do they eat? And what is the packaging like? You know, that's always interesting. It's interesting to see familiar brands, you know, like what does a box of cornflakes look like in Cambodia? But also, you know, they might have stuff that you've never seen before. Wow, what is this thing? I remember we spent a summer in Amsterdam. It was one of our last big trips. And... That was just interesting because you think, well, it's Amsterdam. Like, how different can it be? In fact, Amsterdam is where the virtual travel club is going next week. Um, but then you go and you go, wow, like they really eat differently there. They really, um, you know, they're not, they're not eating. I mean, in Cambodia, I'm sure they're eating much more unfamiliar things. But you can also see, like, what are the priorities of their diet, you know, and uh, all that kind of stuff. Maybe why? Like, why do they eat that way? What what is what has happened historically that has led them to eat that way? Or what is the geography like? I remember when uh, I traveled through Italy, and you come to realize that in Italy, every single town has different food because they're very they just they eat everything that's grown locally, and they eat is is grown fresh. So. One town might have a lot of seafood, and then the next town might have, um, you know, different kinds of vegetables, and you know, you just you just are more aware. And when you're drawing this stuff, you don't just skip over it, you know, because you you stop and ask questions like, why is this like this? You know, you could. You, I've drawn, for instance, uh, a newsstand or uh, public transportation. You know, what does a bus look like in Cambodia? And so, so you you start to understand the country much better because you're drawing it. And if you were just taking a photograph of it, you probably wouldn't make those kinds of observations. Um, as you can see, I can <laughs> rattle on about this and. Um, my hand is just drawing. Um, but so 
you know, if you were with a bunch of friends and you're looking at this temple, what would they be doing at this point? You're sitting down and you're drawing. What are they doing? Maybe walking around, maybe getting a snack, maybe taking some photographs, maybe sitting in the shade, um, all those kinds of things. And you're just doing this. You're just doing this other thing. So it's not, it's not a massive imposition. But you're going to really understand this temple when you're done. You're going to understand its architecture, its construction, its materials. What is it made of? What are, what are these old? What are these little friezes that are all over here? Are they like the life of Buddha? What is it? Then you might go over and ask somebody. Maybe there's like a somebody in attendance, and you say, "What is the story with all this?" And you could even show them your drawing. That's another cool thing. Uh, in fact, when I did this Vietnam thing, I show you like uh, like here's a little stamp that I got. Uh, and, you know, you might find a, a little, uh, you know, a sticker or, or a receipt from the, the coffee shop. And you just add that into your sketchbook as another kind of level of souvenir. Your goal isn't to just do a drawing of this temple. Your goal is to document your experience and use your drawing to enrich it. That's really the incredible power the drawing has to just intensify your experience and your observations. So I'm kind of, I think I'm going to stop here and I'm going to move on to a different image. Let's see what else we have here. Um, yeah, this. So this is pretty cool. This is unusual, right? It's, it is a guy with basically like a little taxi, little taxi um, that is on a motorcycle. So I'm going to draw him, it's because this this is a unique thing. This is one of those things that, again, this photograph is nice enough, but let's sit down and let's look at this guy. First of all, let's look at his face. He has a nice, strong face, broad nose, kind of broad lips, and then he has this like, little lines. Um, and... Uh, shirt and here is the let's draw a bit of the scooter it's another thing I remember from Vietnam so Vietnam's basically next to Cambodia I think there's probably a certain amount of similarities between the countries and the cultures but um, the traffic in Vietnam was absolutely insane there's basically no Traffic control. No, I mean, it just flows endlessly. It just it never stops. There were never any traffic lights. It seemed. It's and so you'd get to the corner of the street and you'd say, "How am I ever going to cross this road? These people will never stop for me." And then what you would do? You would watch other people and you'd see what are they doing, and they are just stepping into the traffic, almost without looking. They would step in, and the traffic would just flow around them like a river. Just flow around them. At first, you think that's insane, but I don't know. I never, I, I mean, I never saw anybody getting run over there. And I would talk to the other people who, I, um, who lived there that I'd met, and they were like, "Yeah, this is just the way it is. There's no reason to control it. It just sort of has a life of its own." You think that's just sort of insane, but it works. It works for them. So you'd also see people carrying amazing amounts of stuff on a scooter. So you'd see like, you know, a couple, and then you'd see a whole family, and then you'd see a family with like giant cardboard boxes. You'd see like somebody, and again, stacked high, really high, um, in, in a, what seemed like a completely precarious way, but that was, they were just really skilled at it. And they obviously didn't have the money for cars yet, so that's kind of how it worked. And uh, it did work. I remember that from when I was a kid in Pakistan. It was the same kind of thing. It's like people would just rely on their scooters in a way that, you know, Americans, I guess, rely on their cars. But it 
really, really um, resourceful. And I don't know, it's, it, it seemed completely unsafe and terrifying, but I guess that's just the way they, they are used to doing it, and it works. So, so yeah, so like this is a guy who, you know, if, if you were sitting in a cafe in, in Cambodia, I'm sure you would see a guy like this maybe waiting for a fare, right? So he's, he would be stopped for long enough for you to draw him. And he would be sitting there. So you're, you're kind of watching him, and, and then you pull out your stuff and you start to draw him. And maybe in the middle of, of while you're drawing him, he suddenly gets, somebody summons him, hails him, and he leaves. And so you go, oh, great, I've only drawn like this much of the drawing. What am I going to do? Well, invariably, there's going to be another guy who comes along and is exactly the same. So yes, you might have taken a photograph, but even if you hadn't, there'll be another reference point that comes up, and you'll just finish the drawing by merging your observations of these two different taxis, and you'll go, okay, yeah, I got basically got it. You know? Or make it up. Nobody's going to check your work and go, oh, hold on a second, that bar wasn't really there. No, nobody cares. But you, know, you, you will have this cool drawing of something that is, is unique and memorable. That's, that's really what this is all about. It's like, how do you remember this stuff? It doesn't need to be perfect. Perfectly accurate. You can see my I've got a few f things that didn't get quite right here, but that's okay. But that's basically the idea. Now I have this this drawing of our taxi driver. So yeah, and then let's have a look. Let's have a look at something else. Okay, now these are these are really cool. I think. This is actually part of, let me just see if I can open it up and you can see, this is part of this giant, giant procession. I've just trimmed it a bit because I want to just focus on a couple of these faces, but they seem very, they're just great. And look at how each one is a unique character. Let's see if we can capture some of that. It's interesting how they do the eyes. Look at us, how they slap, slant upward like that. So you want to draw this face, but you also you have to decide, like, how are you going to make it not a person, but a stone sculpture? Like, what are you going to do to represent that? You know, maybe it has some cracks in it. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you just write, this is a stone. Yeah, I'm going to put his little... Or she's lost. He has lost some of his nose over the. I mean, what do they say? This was. Anchor Watt was. Um, was the kingdom that hasn't been around. I mean, when did it stop? I've forgotten now. It fell apart a long, long time ago. So these faces are presumably hundreds of years old, if not more. Should have paid more attention to that. So you see, what I would do is, particularly with virtual travel, I would go back and do some, maybe some more research to tell my story, you know. And I could make up something about what happened to me while I was drawing this uh, series of heads. But maybe I also completely make up the history. And uh, maybe I talk about how these are actually like alien invaders that here thousands of years ago and from another planet. I don't know. It's your story. You can tell whatever you want out of it. But uh, it's cool, these sort of like top knot that this sculpture has. Like a man bun. And so 
that slants out. So I can't see his other ear, so I'm just going to make it up. Does he have like, are these, what is this? Is it, is it like a giant earring of some kind? That's what it seems like it might be, like some giant earring. I'm not sure. I'm, I'll pretend that it is. And then I can't really see that much of his body, so, but I'll just make it like that. But you can sort of tell this isn't like a real person. So that's okay. You can tell that this is some kind of a statue, Buddha or a king or something. Maybe that's what this, maybe this is like a whole procession of kings. I don't know. If I was there, I could do some more research and find that out and add that to this. So, um, yeah. What else? Okay, so here are some some monks in their sportswear. So I think I'll put let's put one of these guys over here. This is an interesting opportunity to do a drapery study. You know, to say like how do you these guys are all about this, I guess, what is like a giant one piece of fabric and how it's wrapped around them and how the folds go. It's kind of, and I like that. I like his hand down there. But we're going to draw it quickly. We have to move quickly because these guys are walking down the steps and we're going to miss them. So we want to make sure that Got them all, got it all in there. You can see this type of drawing, this kind of travel drawing. You don't know what your subject is going to be. You might draw some food. You might draw some buildings. You might draw some vehicles. You might draw some art. You might draw some people. It kind of challenges you to do all the different sorts of drawing that there is, which is great. That's, that will strengthen your skills and give you new and different challenges, which is fun. And uh, you know, so it becomes like a drawing lesson, even though you're on vacation. You're learning some new ways of drawing stuff. I think that all the practice that we do, like the practice we do with Draw With Me, um, or the practice that you do on your own, this stuff all helps you so that when you are on location, you kind of sort of know, how do I tackle these problems? Because these are drawing situations that come up like out of nowhere. You don't know what it's going to be. You don't know. You can't prepare. Um, you know, it's just, it's a challenge. And that's... Also, one of the exciting parts of doing travel journaling is the, the range of things and the kind of the adrenaline that comes about from suddenly you have to go, oh, no, I have to draw like a dog. Now, there's a dog walking down the street. I want to draw a typical Cambodian dog, but I don't draw dogs. I don't know how to draw cars. I don't know how to do all those things. So this is sort of part of um, a really good reason to... Keep challenging yourself to vary your subject matter and to never feel inhibited to draw anything because, you know, it's all possible. All right. So, maybe it's time to add a bit of color. And also, I think it's time to, you know what, I think I want to, I 
I want to um, do a little bit of lettering. So and I'll do it down here. So I'm just lettering with with watercolor. What is it R E A P? Is that how you spell it? C M Reap. C M Reap. Let me see if I remember. C M Reap. As in what you sow. All right, and I. And uh, you know, I'm going to give this guy, hit him up too. Oops, did I paint over his hand? I think I did. I'm just going to do flat color. I'm not going to get too involved with tone shading. I'm just adding a hue because it's nice. I mean, what's distinctive about this guy is the orange uniform, what do you call that? His sarong, his, his robe, his robe, that's what I'll call it, his robe. Um, and what else? Let's just paint this guy a flat color, too. So it's fairly evident that this is not a living person. Just in case you thought, wait a minute, was that the maitre d' in my hotel? No. So, you know, so we can just hit this stuff up with a few different colors. You know, if we wanted to, we could make every single thing into an individual color. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. But now I might want to add a little bit of lettering. And, uh, you know, I might want to say... Um, Uber driver... Chain... Smoked... All the way. Maybe I'll give him a little cigarette and puff of a cloud of smoke and a little arrow to indicate that that's who I'm talking about. Um, and then I would say Entire region, but now his name is long forgotten. Sick transit, Gloria. Maybe he's thinking, maybe he's thinking something like, um, maybe he's thinking about a martini. Why? Why not? <laughs> okay, so... There we have it. A little bit of, a little bit of travel journaling, 
And I like this sort of collage kind of thing so that you, you know, you can extend your drawing and then, you know, particularly with when you're using an accordion book and you could just keep the story going down the, down the line and, uh, you know, just keep stacking up your drawings in little slivers and, and kind of wrapping. I like wrapping the letters around the drawings and that's just my style of doing it. So, yeah. Um, what else? Let me see if you guys have had any interesting things. Janice is putting some homilies out there. Janice is, Janice is writing some drawing bumper stickers. Awesome. Whatever drawing you do is better than the one you didn't do. It's just paper. Do it on copy paper. No, don't. Do it on Honolulu Zigzag. Janice, our sponsor. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. So, Tina thinks that I'm fearless. You know, it's just a sketchbook. They're making new ones over at Honolulu every day. It's just paper. Think about it. You go When you go on vacation, right? I mean, what does a sketchbook like this cost? Like 15 bucks, maybe. Think about when you go on vacation and you are like, how much money you drop, right? How much, how easy it is to go like, oh, I'll go in there. Oh, I'll buy that souvenir. Oh, I'll go and see that show. Oh, let me try and eat in this restaurant. And if you're like counting your pennies the whole time, later on you go, oh, I really wish I'd gone to see that show, but it was like $40 for a ticket. Once you go on vacation, you got to just enjoy yourself. Set a budget if you want, but don't think about money, certainly. And certainly when it comes to sketchbooks, you don't think about money. Just fill it. I mean, honestly, you can work in a sketchbook for a couple months. And so, the, so again, if it's not money, if you're not worried about that, then what is it? It's just a piece of paper. It's really like kind of one of the lowest things on the planet. It's hum, the humble page. It, is, it, is, uh, it welcomes you. Um, yes. Jen likes my shirt. Yeah, this is my vacation shirt. I'm on vacation. So, um, what else? What else have you guys had to say while I was busy? Jen says, draw with me has helped me a ton with relaxing when drawing quicker. Yeah, I think... It's kind of getting into the flow, getting confidence. That's how, Drawing fast is coming from confidence. And confidence comes from drawing a lot. So that's why I'm saying my, the reason I encourage you over and over again to draw, to carry a sketchbook around with you, just fill, try and fill a sketchbook every month and your life will radically change. Carry a sketchbook with you, draw whatever you see, and uh, that's it. What was the virtual travel club, says Martina. The Virtual Travel Club is the Virtual Travel Club. That was, that is the Virtual Travel Club in the schoolyard, sketchbook school. All right. Um, thank you for joining me. That was really fun. I, I look forward to seeing your Cambodian adventure. And maybe you went to really different places than I did. And you're going to share them with us. That's cool. You're going to go to the schoolyard, perhaps, and you're going to put them there. Um, what else are you going to do? You're going to, if not there, then maybe you're going to go to Facebook or Instagram and you're going to po post them there. All right. If you would like to get a zigzag book like this, this exact kind, the size, it's got like this little cool ribbon that snaps it all together. Um, we're giving away a few of them. Write to us and tell us, don't just say, I want it. Say why you want it, why you think you could use it, why it really appeals to you, what seems wonderful about it. Woo us, and then we will pick, more or less at random, the ones who tickle our fancy, and we will mail it off to you, presuming that you put your mailing address in your email. Don't write a big essay and then forget your, your mailing address because there's not much we can do about that. So next week, no draw with me, alas. No draw with me. It'll be draw without me. 
So I will see you the following week. Art for All podcast. Uh, we do one every Monday. John Muir Laws and I. And we blather for like an hour about all kinds of stuff. It's something you could listen to while you're while you're not drawing with me next week. <laughs> listen to the podcast. You can subscribe to it on any podcast app. You can also watch it here on YouTube. We record the video portion of every episode we do and we post it here. So that's why the bottom thing, that's why you should subscribe. Because if you subscribe, you'll be notified whenever there is a new episode, as there is every Monday. So um, share your drawing, please. Go to put it on social media or in the schoolyard and tag it, hashtag SBS Draw with me. Don't email it to me. Don't send it to info at schedulesschool.com. I can't. We have a process. We go out. We harvest all the beautiful, magnificent art early in the week. And then we put it together into the video that begins each episode. But now you have two weeks or 10 days, let's say, to make some art and to share it with us. So thank you for doing all those things. And I'll see you next time in two weeks. Will it be April by then? I don't know. Will it be April? What is today? Today's the 24th, so yeah, it'll be April. Can you believe it? Amazing. Um, so thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Until then, keep drawing, whether you're traveling somewhere or not. And if you enjoy the Virtual Travel Club, let me know um, by sharing your work. Because I think this could be something we could do on a regular basis. It is a fun way to do it. And we could, and they're putting up those ideas. Nanda and Karen are posting those ideas of places to go. So we could join their travel herd periodically. So that is it. Thank you all. Thank you, people. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody else, for joining me. I'll see you next time. I'll be the same.